Hello and welcome to another DVD bunker. I'm Brian. Matt? Yeah. <laughs> I made you Curve say it this ball, time. Curveball. Curve <laughs> I just don't remember. I, I literally have no plan week to week. I just <laughs> fly by the seat of my pants. I think it's starting to show, though. I, think I had this whole plan of what I was going to say and everything. <laughs> this is the one time I had a prepared statement, and then you threw that curveball. Oh, out. see, I could tell. Off, I could so. tell you were getting too you were too <laughs> prepared. I like, to keep it, I like to keep it light. I like to keep it moving. You ready to start? We ready to go? We ready? <laughs> ready? I saw you just put your notes away quickly and yeah. tuck them in your back pocket. <laughs> so uh, if you, this is your first time watching the DVD Bunker, uh, this is a show where we go through my DVD collection, pull out movies we haven't watched in a really long time, sometimes Matt hasn't seen them at all, mm -hmm. and uh, we revisit them and see if they were worth my money, or if I would buy them again, or if the DVD is even still playable. <laughs> <laughs> I take good care of my DVDs. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that. Not, As I'm jamming them into my uh, media <laughs> devices, i scratching them like, that looks pretty good. It used to look nice. got it in there, yeah. And uh, today's episode, we're doing Way of the Gun. The Way of the Gun. The I Way, don't, yeah. I, I know. The, the The is very small. I can't <laughs> see it. Very West Side Story kind of font. Yeah, good call, there. yeah. Good call. So, um, anybody who doesn't know, this is basically a uh, kind of crime drama yeah. thriller. Uh, Ryan Philippi and Benicio Del Toro are these kind of criminals in over their head a little bit. They kidnap us, Juliette Lewis, who's a surrogate. She's carrying the baby of some rich couple. Mm -hmm. Um, also Ty D Tay Diggs and James Conner. I can't right remember exactly how they tie in if they're both hired by the by the rich couple, or if they're two, if they're if James Conn and Tate Diggs are working together, or just like independently of each other towards the same end, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, I have I have a hard time remembering. He's an employee what of of James Conn of some sort. I think is, is he, that what it yeah, is? Yeah, I think he's his employee. <clears throat> I think all this speculation though goes just goes to show why we it's perfect time to go oh, back absolutely. and revisit this. Absolutely, Corey, the director of this, won an Oscar for the screenplay of Usual Suspects, right. which that I think a lot of that maybe he's like. Was the way Benicio del Toro read some of those lines helps you get that <laughs> yeah. Oscar? You know what I mean? He wrote a great screenplay. That's an awesome story. Yeah, you got to take good. away from it. But yeah, and he's like, oh, I got to put this guy in every movie if I ever get a chance. But I would have felt the same way. Well, I mean, that's the Usual thing. Suspects. He was an Oscar winning screenwriter. This is his next project. He oh, goes okay. on, he like writes and directs Way of the Gun. Yeah. 2000. So it's like 96 to 2000. He does this. And then, like, this movie didn't do great. And it kind of. Uh, mm. He goes off the radar. Like, I don't know what happened. And he doesn't really pop up. And he does a couple, excuse me, a couple things here and there. He wrote the, uh, he wrote the uh, Tom Cruise movie Valkyrie. Yeah, yeah. Which is where I think he met Cruise because then coming up in like 2012. And so he, he like starts partnering up with Tom Cruise. He writes and directs the first Jack Reacher movie. Yeah. He uh, writes the screenplay for Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. And then he uh, wrote the screenplay and directed Rogation. Mission Impossible, and he's gonna do six too. Yeah, I think now he's kind of reached this point where they're like, "Wow, you put him with Cruise, we're gonna make like eight hundred million <laughs> right, bucks a right. movie. Who cares what they do?" No doubt. And it's like, despite the fact that Edge of Tomorrow underperformed, like it was, uh, everybody likes it. It's not like movie. a cult hit, kind of. And you know, he adapted it was adapted from a comic book, and so he did the screenplay yeah. and he did it well. Um, although I think the third act of that movie is kind of a mess. Sidebar. It's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a really strong first two acts. <laughs> um, but where do you go? Yeah, you know. You do. Time for your Aliens monster fight. You got to get your monster. Time, yeah. You got to get your monster fight in at the end. You know. <laughs> so um, I guess we just kill him now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole thing with a cool monster. At the end, right. you got to do something. Like, oh, it. so yeah. I guess we just kill it now. All right, let's kill it. I like that. <laughs> so, um, was there anything else? Do you have any other remembrances about this? No, movie? I remember loving this movie a lot, but I have never watched it. Like I remember watching it. Like those first couple times when I got it, and then I don't think I've watched it in 15 years. Though. Right, right, exactly. Around so the time it came perfect, out, uh, exactly. I want to kind of assess it, kind of hold it up into. Like I said, we're in kind of an age of new noir, kind of almost. Mm -hmm. There's like a spot. There's a kind of a spot for that, and so I feel like this is a, an interesting thing to go back and revisit. Like I said, I'm like you. Remember really liking it. But then when it comes down to like, well, what about it? Do you like, I yeah. have like specific moments I can pull out, but I don't like, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, a whole, yeah. a whole movie isn't made of that. Absolutely, so absolutely. All right. Well, I think I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's watch the way of the gun. The way of the gun. <laughs> gun hands are cool. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, and we're back from watching Stand Off the Movie. <laughs> a lot of people pointing guns at each other in the way of the gun. I mean, I guess it stands to reason. Yeah. The way of the gun. That is the way. The longest, maybe the longest standoff in a movie in this. There's like a long scene. Well, there's a lot of... This. There's a couple scenes where people like hold guns on each other and then like while the other person changes positions. It seems like there's a lot of points where people are like dropping guns and moving. It's like... I don't know, I feel like a gunfight is just, yeah. uh, just dying to break out at any moment. Like, the movie starts with it, and I think it's important to hit on that big opening scene with oh, yeah. uh, Sarah Silverman. I want to note a couple of things that I remember about it, that watching it that I loved, that I forgot, because she takes everything over in my memory. Yeah. Her boyfriend's hair. <laughs> it's like this giant, like, mm. red, f like, crazy. Out of control. It's weird. It's weirdly shaped. It's like an uneven shape. It's, mm. it's, it's like a, a clown. It's like he's a part-time clown on the side or something <laughs> right, like that. Right. This is what he deals with. And then there's a great moment when she's all spewing and yelling as they're walking towards uh, Benicio Del Toro and Ryan Philby, who are, like, leaning up against the dude's car. And he just like flicks his hood ornament. Like Benicio is just like with, with a lot of disdain. It's just like, man. Like, he, does, he does that a lot. He has these little things he does in this movie that you're like, well, he's oh, very Benicio amazing. in this yeah. whole movie. Just like, doing crazy off the wall shit that like, he can get away with. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't talk a lot, you know, and everything no. he says is very deliberate, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he gives a lot of good looks, though. You're right. But I do, I do want to say, I believe her credit in this movie is Raving Bitch. Is raving her credit. Bitch. Well, we're going to talk about the beginning, which I love that that's the <laughs> that's name pretty, of her character. Yeah, so pretty good appropriate. for her. But it sets the stage because they punch her in the face. And so you like, you're immediately know what kind of guys you're dealing with. They yeah. don't try to make these guys likable in any yeah. way. It's like a reverse save the cat moment here at the beginning. Right, right. To right. know that the guys that are following are in fact bad guys, mm -hmm. uh, which they not they with are. a heart of gold, just, no. just basically <laughs> bad guys. No, they're, yeah. although they do try to, they, they border on giving Ryan Felipe a conscience and, or just making you think he's a bad, stupid criminal. Like, yeah, either, I don't know what to he, think about is that. Is he yeah, like, right, though. almost the end? a nice guy or is he just terrible at this <laughs> because you do have Benicio Del Toro who gives him these looks like you're There's fucking up the criminal part of this <laughs> yeah, man like, a couple times do. where you feel like he's kind of teaching him a little bit uh -huh. like he's the next generation you know James Conn represents one generation of bag man Benicio Del Toro's the middle and then Ryan Philby would be the up and coming so he's just learning the, yeah. the kind of trade right now absolutely. he's a little wild he's a little dumb you know absolutely what uh, what are these guys they talk about at the beginning because they have like the narration, the book ending narration, and he says, you know, we went off the beaten path and just decided to look for. I mean, does that just mean that, that this is like we're criminals? We don't want to live in your well, society. Well, I get the impression that it's just like they they stopped, like they're basically drifters bumming around, but they're not looking for like Mickey Mouse little scores. They're trying to find that one. They're waiting for that one big money pot to fall in their lap. But yeah. they want to like leave themselves open to it, so they have nothing tying them down. So that no matter when it comes along or what it happens to mm -hmm. be, which I see, and they're ju they're just sustaining. Which it's funny because they're not pulling little crimes to sustain their uh, donating sperm. Yeah, which let's talk about the passing line in this, which stuck with me. And I one of the things I did remember didn't bring up. He says in, at one point. Uh, you get three grand for <laughs> for donating sperm. I was like, well, there's your big eye ticket. Right, right. Like, I'll, I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, be, like, I'm going to go have lunch. I'll be back after right, lunch. Right. You know? Like, I can fire. Come on. I mean, I can, yeah. If that's my job, I can make it work. You know what I mean? Yeah, which that was some good comedy at the beginning, though. The Again, establishing yeah. the characters and what kind of guys they are and, like, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. But that's where they pick up the job. They just hear somebody over here in passing about a surrogate who's getting paid like a ridiculous amount of money, and they get the doctor's name. And they basically just, on that alone, decide they're going to go to this doctor's office and kidnap this girl when they see her. Yep. They don't do a lot of research. They, they don't do no a lot of research, planning. Nothing. They basically just know that the person who's paying her has money. They're going to kidnap her, ransom her back, and get some money out of mm -hmm, her. Mm -hmm. And that's like the extent of their plan. Now, this is the thing, though. I thought about these two. They, they're not... They're not. They don't plan. They don't make good plans. But they're adaptable. When their plans don't work, yeah. they think on their feet, yeah. and they're good about that. That's and the they're strength. good about improvising. So, like that's where where they're weak in their planning. They do have an ability that's kind of like it. You know, it saves them a couple times. Oh like, yeah, puts them in good positions. They kind of. They kind of like. 
It's like they have backup plans. They're good at, they're not necessarily great at having a good plan, but they're good at knowing that their first plan is going to fail and yep. they should have a contingency. Ryan Phillip even articulates that. He does say a plan is just a list of things that doesn't get done. At which one is, point a, which is actually a quote that I almost, that I use a lot and forgot I got from this. Yeah, movie. I always like, remember it from this. I yeah. don't, I didn't remember it was from this till we saw it in the movie and I was like, man, I've said that a lot. There's some great Here quotes. I thought I was just clever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thought you were just passing knowledge. I was just like, oh there. man, I can't. <laughs> what a great saying I came up with. Did you guys check that out? Uh, Benicio Del Toro and Ryan Philby do inadvertently succeed in kidnapping her. Yeah. Despite their, you know, despite their and then buffoonery. Really, and really the interrupted, the the off, it's like an off-camera shootout. We see a little bit of action when they finally break away. But right, it, that right. standoff that they have where they give up continues into like, this is what I'm talking about. They have these crazy moves, but it is part of well, that adaptability. That right, I was, well, I was going to say, I think that's one of another memorable scene in this is the kind of like alley chase scene, yeah. right? Where they're using the alleys. It's something I had never seen in a yeah, movie before right. where they like, like put the car kind of in drive and let it roll slowly, but they get out and then they jump back in and it's a way to like create distance between them and the people chasing yeah. them. And they double up on using it. So they trick them and they end up smashing their car yeah, with yeah. it. So it's like a bluff the second time. So that was really cool. I enjoyed that. That That's a really interesting little thing. Cat and mouse, right. right uh, little cat stuff. and mouse. Yeah. And again, like an adaptability, they obviously have these ideas and things they've done. This is clearly something they've tried before. One of them at least has this plan. Mm -hmm. So they know they've been in this situation before. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, let's see, we get introduced to, uh, well, I guess we should establish what everybody's job is. Ty, Tay Diggs is one of the bodyguards for Julia Lewis. He works for the rich, the rich guy. Uh, James Kahn also works for a rich guy, but he's more of like a, like, Almost like a, oh, it's hard to explain. Like a they fixer. call him a bag man, but he's like a fixer. Yeah, yeah. he kind of handles his shadier dealings. Like and le and le the money guy in this is a is a real bad guy. He even right, says like right. people that do business with me are bad guys. Mm -hmm. That's why you do business with me. So everybody yeah. is bad. Right. Well, they have the whole movie. speech too about like when she's telling. Benicio Del Toro and Ryan Philby about who they have no idea who they kidnapped and she's like you don't even know whose kid you took like yeah, yeah and like he's really got his money up. by basically being a front for like mob construction <laughs> and shit like yeah yeah so um so you got you know Tay Diggs and and uh his partner and then you got James Kahn and it takes James Kahn like less than a day to find him they're hiding out at some truck stop yeah, and he the finds him like immediately. <laughs> he's really James Conn, as an aside, is amazing in this movie. He, is, like, he has so some great. moments. He's just playing he does, a great tough guy in oh, this. <laughs> he's so good. And I just I wrote it down because it's one of the best lines I've ever heard in a movie. He says, I'm gonna bring a day of reckoning on you that you will not live long enough to never forget. <laughs> <laughs> and I just and he delivers it in such a scary way, but it's such a ridiculous line where you hear so, you're like, like you said, you said, What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the way I felt about the voiceover you're talking about. There's some voiceover at the beginning and at the end. And, and it's kind of like this pseudo intellectual. It's kind of yeah. like, like similar. It's like a dumb guy's version of the voiceover in Fight Club. Where it's like it sounds cool, but if you think about it too long, <laughs> like, you're like, no. that doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. It just, it doesn't mean you're, right. you're just saying nothing. You're like. right. You're absolutely right. So um, there's complications with the baby. They have to bring the doctor in, and like it's really convoluted. They keep yeah, this like, plot is the most convoluted plot we've ever. Oh we've ever, yeah, I mean, it's and we did a movie about multiple per a guy who has a multiple personality <laughs> fight inside his head. That was pretty cut and dry. What you got past all the personalities, though. This is like every yeah, every personality has a very sophisticated plan to get this money. There right, there are a lot to of players. either get the money or the baby, or they have different. Everybody's got different motives. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite intros is we see a guy playing what I would consider to be the next level of Russian roulette by himself. Yeah, right? what do you call this? Bag of guns? This <laughs> bag of playing? guns? Yeah, explain this. This is, a, this is amazing. He's got like six guns. He's doing Russian roulette with each of them, right? So he's got a, a single bullet in each gun. And then he puts the guns in a pillowcase. And he like spins the pillowcase around and like shakes it around and then dumps it out. Yeah. And then he not only, he's doing the Russian roulette, but he double pulls. He yeah. pulls once, and then he pulls again, and then James Conn calls him, and he's just like, hey, I got some work for yeah. you. But he gets, he 
pulls another gun out of the bag, yeah. which which leaves you to wonder, like, what's the point of the, well, of oh, the bag altogether? I think he altogether? was going to go through... Yeah, because, like, he picks the bag up and spins it, but it's not like he really shakes up the mystery. Yeah, he you just know? spins it, and then he opens yeah. it, but then he's it's seemingly he's just going to pull every gun out and fire, too. <laughs> you didn't need to put him in the bag and spin it. I don't know, but do it's that. a pretty great character introduction <laughs> to a guy who doesn't have a huge part in the movie, but everything he does is kind of like... Yeah. He's, he's kind of the weird comic relief in this yeah. a little bit to some extent. <laughs> you can tell, you know, I think they're trying to say, you know, he, there's this, yeah, like you said, this older generation of guys. Right. He was at one point like this capable badass motherfucker because he's not a <laughs> and slouch. Now, no, but now he's just like completely dead inside. <laughs> like, he doesn't even emote while he's pulling no. these triggers. He has kind of a like dead eye like, look. Like, like it's, it's almost like a Hannibal Lecter where there might have been a slight raise in his heart rate, but we couldn't, we couldn't clock it. And we have to get through some of the other twists. We also find out that Tay Diggs is... Uh, banging the rich wife, the yep. one who didn't want to have a baby, like that's which, why there's a surrogate. Yeah, which really serves no purpose. But I guess would say maybe she just doesn't want to fuck her husband because she, yeah, she got that Tay Diggs. She got that Tay Diggs. <laughs> but uh, and and then also uh, we find out that the baby isn't actually her and the old man's baby at all. It's the doctor and Julia Lewis. Yeah. They're having it's their baby in yeah. there. Oh man, there's so many things going on. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, and I feel like that is probably what hurt this movie for a lot of people because, yeah, I've seen this movie probably ten times and I still have yeah, a problem I wrote coming down, up with what's happening. <laughs> I wrote down here a couple, at least once, too many twists. Yeah, like, a lot of why twists. are there so many twists? Yeah. yeah, and also I think this movie is kind of a series of really cool scenes strung together with too complicated of a plot. Yeah. Like the first 20 minutes is really strong yeah. with like the opening with the, with establishing them and then the kidnapping and like the shootout in the alley. That's all really good. You're right. And then you got these long stretches of kind of like draggy dialogue, twisty dialogue and like overly complicated. There'll be good moments in them. Like yep. I like the whole thing with uh, Benicio Del Toro and uh, James, James Conner. Con they have their little sit down coffee oh, and they're talking. Awesome. It's like a coolness contest. Yeah. Like <laughs> who's more badass. But they're basically just kind of like establishing like they both know the score. They both know that there's a, the, there's a good chance this could go badly. And it's kind of James Conner's way of like – I, hey, I'm I'm one, I'm like you. Yeah. I'm giving you this way out. But he's like, hey, you know. And I guess Benicio del Toro kind of chooses Ryan Philippi in that moment. It's kind of like, no, I, I already made a deal with this guy. I'm already doing this thing, kind of. Yeah, you get a you get the idea that Benicio del Toro is like a real stand up mm. dude. Like he's a bad guy, but he's definitely he has the most a code. competent. It's like. I almost get the impression that he could be handling this a lot better, but he's letting Ryan Philby take the lead on it as like a lesson. He's yeah. like teaching him. I get you get those moments because he has conversations with these old timers where he right. does say things like, "I don't think brains are a big part of this this whole operation." Like, <laughs> well, and like we you were talking about, sometimes he gives him that little look when he's doing stuff, and there's. He comes in, and Ryan Philby's been getting a little too chummy with Julia Lewis. They're like playing cards yeah, and stuff, yeah. and he. And he like gives him a look, and Ryan Philby goes soft. And he actually has a, like a crisis of conscience, and he's gonna. They're gonna give up on it again. They're gonna bail. This is after they've had him kidnapped. The doctors come out. There's all the the meeting with James Conn. All this has happened, and they're ready to walk away again. And Juliet Lewis shoots at him through the door because her plan was just to lull him into a false insecurity enough to get a gun and and protect herself. She never thought that she would do such a good job that. She would actually, they would actually consider just forget leaving yeah. her. Like, he was ready to just leave her there and let her go and be like, a mom deserves to be with her child yeah, and shit. Yeah. Like, her plan worked too well and she was too dumb to realize it. <laughs> <laughs> but also, at the same time, I feel like in the same vein of, of what you're saying is that was a teaching moment because I do believe Benicio Del Toro knew that she was waiting with a gun right. and let Ryan Philippi and was like... Right before he was about to get shot in the face and die by her, he pulled him out of the way. Right. And then, I don't know what that coat hanging on the mirror meant, but it seemed to me like that meant Ryan Philippi knew he knew or something. Right. He had something a gun like on that. him, like, like, motherfucker, you almost let me die. Yeah. But I think he was trying to teach him, like, if you don't do if you do this shit half assed, you're fucking dead. Right, right. If you, you don't take it mean? seriously, like people will try to manipulate you, you gotta stay tough, you gotta stay frosty, you know what I mean? Yeah. Start to get into the final, you know, they've got her holed up in this sleazy hotel now they're trying to get the baby out of course there's complications they're gonna have to do a c-section now the doctor who 
you know, obviously was shaky about performing these since his, whatever happened in Baltimore. <laughs> um, now he's going to have to perform the C-section at basically at gunpoint, which <laughs> the, they in no movie has a C-section gone on this long with this much conversation or stuff going around. When he's got his hands inside of her and there's like there's literally gunfight yeah. going on while she's got her he takes gun. one hand out of her to kill a guy with a gun at yeah. some point and then yep. gets back to. It. But there are some good moments they do with the with the. Because Benicio Del Toro does have this moment of realization where there's a whole gunfight and he's watching people die and then he kind of looks and he's like, oh yeah, this lady's having a baby. Yeah, right? It's like, like oh, splayed open in front of me here. Uh. Also, I wanted to talk about like where do Ryan Philby and Benicio Del Toro keep getting all their guns? <laughs> they keep switching cars, but yet like they have sniper <laughs> rifles and machine guns and and flak jackets, shotguns. Yeah, yeah they have they and they have bags of bullets. Yeah, like, they're bags carrying, and like, bags of bullets that they have on their person. Yeah, I don't know where they like when they switched all that over, where they were keeping all that stuff. But uh, it seems like they had an awful lot. Of, I mean, they obviously had money at one time. They sure did go. You know, well, that's accumulate all their, a lot of guns yeah. and bullets. That's where all their sperm donation money is just going to fucking bullets, man. It's they're Jesus. living in their car, but they're oh just buying God. them up, buying up bullets. Yeah, they have so many bullets and so many guns. You're right. Machine guns, which Benicio Del Toro, that bothered me how much of a fail he is with this machine gun. Like, he yeah. just essentially just sprays up rooms yeah. wildly. That's the only moment in the movie where he's not a complete badass. Uh, even at other parts during that gunfight, he does cool shit, but he blows with that machine gun. Come on, buddy. Yeah. Aim a little lower. <laughs> the doctor, so, like, the doctor ends up killing Tay Diggs, and um, again, for basically the third time, they decide they're just going to walk away from the baby part of this, but the money's there. They see the money, but it's like a trap. The money's waiting on them. It's in the middle of this square. And at this time, James Conn has showed up with the Expendables dads. <laughs> like, there's a lot of there's a lot of khakis and polo shirts and members only jackets. Yeah, these are guys that you would expect to see at like a country buffet, not out in the middle I like of Mexico. To think, I like to think that every one of them was playing the same Russian roulette game when James <laughs> Conn called. Just different bags, different kinds of guns. <laughs> you know, one guy's wife's like pouring him coffee while he's doing it. It's just his everyday gig. Absolutely. Oh, that makes it. It's good to add depth to these <laughs> static characters sometimes in your mind. So, I enjoy yeah, it. of course, they can't resist the bag of money, even though it's an obvious trap. So they get into what I really thought was too long of a shootout. It's real it, long. It was like, it started out pretty cool. I was like, oh, cool. Lots of shooting, lots of. But then it just went on and on and nobody's really getting shot there's just a lot of people shooting guns at walls and i'm just like a lot of, right, yeah, a lot of like missing. dragging along also the the when you think of the strategy that they're bringing like these guys just essentially run out in the middle of about 10 dudes and just right. start and shooting they, at all angles and, exactly, and they've got um, completely covered <laughs> in a circle in an open like it's like the middle of a you, you know you've seen a his you know, the the mexican yeah it's like hotel california right you know, exactly well, they convert the old missions into hotels yeah. that's kind of like what this Courtyard, is courtyard yeah and they got the big courtyard, and and yeah, you're wide open. But it does lead to one of, again, another moment that is so memorable to me because it's like this movie had a bunch of stuff. It's like the, it's like what's his name, Christopher McQuarrie had all these little things left, cool little moments left over <laughs> from when he was writing uh, Usual, Suspect. Usual Suspects. <laughs> and so he started with these cool bits that he knew he was gonna put in, and then he made this like really super convoluted plot around it. Yeah. He was like, what did people like about the Usual Suspects? Oh, the twist. So I'm going to put in like five twists. Yeah, I think <laughs> so I'm you're right. Twist think, it up. Yeah, you're just trying to one-up himself. <laughs> right. But he did have these like set pieces he wanted to do, and he had like the first 20 minutes, and then he had, uh, you know, the thing with the torture and some stuff in the middle. But then he had this idea of when he jumps over into the fountain to get cover and the whole inside of the fountain has broken beer bottles and shit. So Ryan Philby gets his real John McClane moment where he's like, dig a giant piece of disgusting glass oh, out of his arm. It's a good too. It was good though. Real memorable. Again, what a, lots what of memorable a, moments. In one this. of those, uh, one of those bag men while he was playing the, while he was playing the gun pillowcase game was watching home alone while he was doing yeah. it. He got the call. He's like, Hey, Absolutely. what if we break up some bottles around this uh, fountain in case somebody jumps in? That's I like it better idea. than it's just like the drunk prostitutes that drink beer out there in the afternoon <laughs> waiting on John, just <laughs> smashing them in there. <laughs> it's like a, it's like it's like an HBO show. There. Just, <laughs> it's about a Mexican brothel. I'd watch that. They just yeah, sit yeah, out there and drink absolutely. and smash there. 
So, well, but James Conn does not kill them. Yeah, which is why doesn't he kill? Do you think it's solely out of the mutual respect for Benicio del Toro? Is that we're supposed to believe? Like, is that what the movie wants? Us I to think, think it's because they never hurt the girl. Because spoiler alert for the final twist: Juliette Lewis is James Conn's daughter. Yeah, and they actually. Only people who ever really flat out say it are Tay Diggs and his partner. Yeah, they figure Everybody it out, else yeah. kind of like is confused and like it's hinted around at very strongly and they don't really pick up on it. But yeah, like it's James Conn's daughter. He tells <laughs> he tells Benicio del Toro, which is something I didn't pick up that you did, where he mm-hmm. we believe he shows him a picture of her that says he's, he says he's trying to he's, cut he's it. He's like, uh, you know, they're having their their cool guy conversation. It's right at the very end, and they're about to walk away. And he's really he's like giving his final chance to like, hey, and he's he says something about his daughter's trying to set something up for him, and then he shows him something in his wallet, which I, what I think is probably I a think picture right. of Julia Lewis. We don't see it. And then there's a conversation, too, between the uh, the rich guy and James Kahn where the implication is you work for me and the child in her belly is more important than your child yep. who's carrying it. But it's all real played under the surface. Yep. And, you know, that's when the, the bodyguard guys kind of pick up on it. Which I got to say, this does go in line with with something I want to give this movie props for is the writing is excellent because that's another moment where they wouldn't just talk about it. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. It's very subtle. It. It's just done. Like, let's I agree. Let's go normal people say and there's, in addition to that, there's a lot of cool one-liners. People say a lot of cool Really shit good dialogue. Yeah, good, dialogue. Really solid dialogue awesome in, this. in this movie. But you're right. He's just got like too, too many twists. Like if you pulled some right, of the twists out. Right. I want to think, do you, do you think in the future, like beyond this movie, because James Conn lives and uh, Benito del, del Toro and Ryan Phillippe live. Do you think later on down the road, they kind of like join James Conn's gang and work with him? I'd love to Do see that. Do you think that. they kind of like pass the test with this one? And it's like, wow. if, they, if they, they survive, you know, they're all shot up and shit, but they survive and they come back and they like learn from it. Do you think like James Conn wow, kind of, because be cool. all his old dude buddies got pretty much murdered. Yeah. So he needs a new crew. Yeah. As some young blood, and it right. seems like not only is Benicio del Toro one of these great criminals, he's also got an eye for new talent, and right? Ryan right, Philby exactly, or something like that. Oh, I would love. I, I will say that's one thing that bothers me is like I wanted them to elevate the relationship between. I just wanted more of to know more about those guys about I was Benicio and Ryan Philby, right? Yeah. Their history, their past. Like we've definitely given it a lot more than they do in yeah. the movie. Like we're reading into it, but I also, like you said, you know. Maybe what we're we're just not giving the movie enough credit. Maybe it's built in better oh, than yeah. we think, and we're just picking up on it because it's built well, in well. I, you know? I think you're right. I think it's a success because I want to know more about these guys. I want to. I want to. Like you say, you talk about this James Conn thing. I would. I would race to watch that oh, movie. No, if it was, don't even call that. it Way of the Gun. No. Call it something else and be like, wait, are those those are the same yeah, guys? <laughs> yeah. And then just like, if you're a fan of Way of the Gun, oh, you pick up on it. I would. Yeah. Oh, I'd watch the shit out of that. Yeah, that would be. All right, who do you got for character corner? I, you know, it's not anybody obscure, and we've spoken about him a little bit, um, but I just got to shout out Tay Diggs, mm. who I believe contractually required to, to have a romantic scene with a sexy lady in a movie because yeah. his twist has no bearing on the plot of the movie whatsoever. It's totally unnecessary. Although she does at the very end, last shot of the movie, tell her rich husband that she's pregnant. Yeah, that's right. You get the whole, uh, yeah, like, Tay Diggs is going to have a baby with yeah, this thing. So like, that's cool. It's like, you know, oh, that set up some in nine sequel. months, some fucked up shit's going <laughs> on with this family because he's about to have a brown baby come out. Uh, <laughs> And what a disservice it would be if that was the sequel and none of the stuff we talked about. There was no Ryan Philby, no Benicio. It's Benicio-Tora. all about their like their conflict and raising uh, this bi- interracial child. And- <laughs> it's actually a comedy. It's just a comedy. It's lighthearted comedy. <laughs> out of, from way of the gun came about the racist baby. old dad coming to terms with his. <laughs> he used to be a criminal. Now he's just trying to raise twins. <laughs> one baby is his. One stay digs. <laughs> Now that okay, it's a miracle of science. You know, now I'm sold. Now I want to see it. Right. That's what we preach on DJ. It doesn't matter where you come from; it can always be good if you do it right. So. It's true. But uh, true. I loved his death scene. I think they it's a, like really kind of a draw, almost like a comedically drawn out death scene. The way he just yeah. kind of looks off, or I mean, he sits there for a while. <laughs> and he got killed by that doctor. Best move that doctor made because that guy was going to kill you and probably do you think, your is there girlfriend. A, is there a subplot 
that I missed where he's like a dope head, like he's a dope addict. Like she's in real bad shape. Remember she's like walking down the hallway in that, when they have her in that hotel and it's because he left her alone and he's coming out of the bathroom all like, mm, I feel like in, oh, wow. I feel like in another cut of this movie, he's in there he shooting like a up, problem? like he's got an opium addiction. He's in there shooting up morphine or something. And they just kind of had to cut that wow. out. I mean, I'm just saying. No, that's true. Cause they barely it. humanize those guys, which I guess that scene with Tay Diggs, does a little. These guys are, they're almost like machines, you yeah, know, him absolutely. and uh, his partner. And speaking of his partner, that's somebody I wanted to shout out for oh, Character yeah. Corner. Uh, <laughs> Mickey Cat. He, uh, most people might know him. He's the bully in Days to Confuse, the guy who beats up Adam Goldberg. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, he doesn't the get a greaser chance. dude. Uh, yeah. You know? He doesn't get a chance to pop his shirt off in this movie. No, yeah, no. But. I'm sure he was itching to. Uh, is, is now the time? Is it, <laughs> really? Chase, I'm going to wear the suit the whole Chase movie? He doesn't take his shirt off either. Like, no. I feel like it's a travesty. There's it's there's true. a lot of. And you got James Conn. You got a lot of opportunities. <laughs> James Conn should have been the one who takes his shirt off. <laughs> I mean, his shirt is painted on anyway. Exactly. His shirt he's I wearing. like his. His polo shirt's so tight you can see his wife beater <laughs> underneath it. Like, why even wear the wife beater at this Yeah, point? there's no wardrobe. That's James Conn. <laughs> James Conn's like, no, luck. no, this is what I wear. And like I said, when his posse shows up, they're all dressed <laughs> just like him. <laughs> Members only jackets. Uh, so good. They're bad as fuck. Uh, I do want to shout out two other guys for Character Corner because I just picked up on them. Uh, the one was that we talked about, the guy who plays the rich guy, um, uh, Scott Wilson. A lot of people, especially who watch... This show these days are going to know him. He was on The Walking Dead. I don't know which guy he played. Old dude, big white beard. Um, but Herschel. he's, yeah, there you go. Herschel. That's exactly who he I was. I didn't recognize him. I've watched all yeah. those. Wow. He played Good for him. Beard. Yeah. So, and uh, the other guy was our favorite dude, Russian roulette guy, a, uh, a character actor <laughs> by the name of Jeffrey Lewis. <laughs> Thanks for looking him up. Because <laughs> the, only, the only thing I remember him personally from is he's in a really great episode of X-Files. And I feel like you can say that about any character yeah. actor. You'd be like, they were in a really great episode of X-Files. <laughs> That's what made X-Files great was they would find those guys oh, that were just amazing and use them perfectly. It's so. true. Yeah, which this guy gets that in this movie. He blows his water early. Although, great scene for comedy when he, he dies. Does, he does have a great comedic death scene where he's, he's like dying and James Conn like keeps trying to leave and he keeps talking and James Conn comes back. <laughs> and then the last thing is like, he, he's like, I'd really like to be alone. <laughs> I know, it's so good. And James Conn sells it so perfect because this is like that moment where he's a badass. Also, we're about to have a gunfight, like, right. but I don't want to be a huge dick to this guy that's been my friend, you know, and oh, it's such a great moment. Uh, almost out of place, but they do have some funny stuff. I do movie, feel like so. there is, again, that's something they don't balance as well in this movie as in Usual Suspects. Yeah. And that's where probably him being kind of a first-time director came into it a little bit. Like, I feel like there's a little bit of tone. Like, the jokes that are in it, I like, and they're funny, but they don't balance out the way in Usual Suspects, the comedy kind of like feels in keeping with the rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. one feels like mm -hmm. they just, mm -hmm. they'll be having a real serious scene and then just like put a button on it. Yeah. Just for, it's <laughs> like, hey, can we punch that up a little? Let's do it. Let's do that. So I think we've come to that time in the show. Absolutely. Where we need to look and ask ourselves, is this a goodbye or is it goodbye? Wow, so I'm gonna start with you. Wow, as and I don't know. I was gonna say this one. I'm gonna defer a hundred percent. I love it. I love. I love this movie. But you're right. It, there, it, it's a little over long. You cut 15 yeah. minutes out uh, of just crazy twists that you don't need. It's it's actually pretty awesome. The title is fucking amazing. I love <laughs> yeah. the fucking title of this movie. Uh, Benicio yeah. del Toro and Ryan Philippi are all. Yeah. I agree. The cast, the title, the performances, the dialogue. Not necessarily the story element writing, but the dialogue. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Killer dialogue. All good, and there are some really amazing moments. So even though I agree that it's about 15 minutes too long and that it, it's it's way overly twisty and complicated for no reason, and there's a mm -hmm. lot of like interconnecting of the characters, like everybody has, has a weird connection to everybody else, yeah. and you could hack all that out of it, honestly. But... There is a really solid, gritty drama with good performances from good actors oh, there. Yeah. So even though I don't know if I would recommend it for everyone, like, do I think there are better versions of this product out there? Probably. Yeah. But I still enjoyed it. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to give it a good buy. I yeah. think I have to. I think it's a good buy. And I think to answer your question from before we watched it, I think if this came out today, it would be a lot more popular. I think with I the think Shane they would Black trim the fat. Right, I think you would there. trim yeah. the fat a little bit. 
you would like take out a, a couple of those t- interconnections, a couple of those twists, maybe even just lose a couple characters. Yeah, all together. And yeah, but I do feel like it could be a very successful. Oh yeah, movie. There's some cool shit the, here. Right, right. I think it's strong enough, and I think you know. Christopher McQuarrie obviously learned from his mistakes. Now, I'm no fan of the Jack Reacher movies, and I'm not even a big Mission Impossible guy, but they're successful, and by all accounts, Mission Impossible, at least, are pretty good. Yeah, and I heard the Rogue Nation, the one he did, is like, wow, that, better one, wow yeah. that's what Mission Impossible should be, you right. know what I mean? So, so good for him. Yeah. And I'll keep it enjo- keep enjoying this, and uh, hopefully he'll keep getting work, because he does a lot of... Yeah, he seems to, I really liked... Uh, seems to be on the comeback trail. I really liked uh, Live, Die, Repeat a lot. Oh, I like that I a lot, really too. Like, I know, you, like you said, the it, but like he I said, well, we have a good He adapted monster. it from the comics, so we can't give yeah. him all the credit. That's true, but he's but good at that, though. he he's still did adapt. a good job. Yeah, he's a good mm-hmm. screener, obviously. Oscar winning screenwriter. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. I was, so yeah, I think, I think this was a winner. Um, but Hey, let us know what you think. Comment in the, uh, comment boxes below. This is YouTube. So, and this is actually one of the le- less hateful comment sections because there's not that many people there. Yeah. People that come here are pretty open and kind. <laughs> you keep asking for it every week. That's <laughs> true. I'm baiting them. It's like, <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. No, <laughs> baiting the trolls. Baiting the trolls. <laughs> baiting the trolls. But definitely subscribe to the Tough Channel. Um, keep keep track of all the cool contents coming out here. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Hurstkillies at the Drunksman and hashtag DVD Bunker if you want to talk about this or any of our other episodes. Um, thanks to everybody who's done so much stuff to help us: Janine, Austin, Ron, for all the stuff they've done for the show. And um, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Yeah.